today we are going to be reacting to one of my gameplays from a gaming session and i felt like you guys could benefit from it and just learn a couple things or two here and there just seeing it from my perspective so if you want me to react to your gameplay and give you some personalized tips and tricks on your personal gameplay and what you can do to improve make sure to follow me on twitter and send me your youtube links to your gameplay that you want me to react to make sure it's actual average gameplay i'm not looking for gameplay where you're just trying to flex like a nuke or something like that because there really isn't anything that my audience will be able to gain from that kind of gameplay so we're looking for average gameplay and just show spots here and there where you can improve all right so here's the cue and bam look at that look how many level 100s there are in this lobby so as soon as i saw that you know look what i do here <laughs> i go quickly to my loadout and i change my class setup i'm noticing what kind of map we're on and we're playing on cartel so a lot of the sites are going to be long today's video is sponsored by Bigo live which is a streaming platform which i am currently streaming on for the next couple of days and you definitely don't want to miss out on live streams and i'll get into that in a little bit you could access the website on your desktop however i do recommend downloading the app and watching the live streams on mobile it's just a much more user-friendly experience on that there are also tons of features on this app like the popular page where you could go check out the most popular streamers at that time and also multi-guest you can go ahead and live Live stream with a bunch of friends up to nine people at a time which is pretty cool and also pk where you can go against other streamers most importantly to us the game category you can literally find almost any game that you're interested in watching go ahead and support your favorite live streamers on there including myself with that said you have one last chance to win yourself one of four 100 amazon gift cards and additionally a huge grand prize giveaway package of a ps5 an alienware aurora r11 desktop pc keyboard mouse and monitor all you got to do is make sure to download the app follow me and just say what's up to me in the stream come hang out all the important links necessary will be down below in the description and i hope to see you there and this is the class setup that i'm using it's the qbz 83 class setup i think it's a pretty solid class setup in my opinion and the perks that i'm using here are very essential to me staying alive as long as possible these are all the things that i need and the tools that i need to be able to do well against these guys because you know quite frankly i get comments all the time saying like oh you know so basically you're promoting camping it's well i mean look at my lobbies my lobbies are just harder than the average person's lobbies um and that's just the reality we have to play a certain way and even pro players like skump if you guys don't know who skump is he's a pro player in call of duty he dropped his first nuke by camping and uh you know let's just define camping here a little bit so uh, in my terms, camping is just holding an area down. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not sitting in a corner. Uh, that right there is just a toxic type of camping definition. So like I was saying back to Skump, like you have to hold an area down to be able to drop a nuke or get even remotely a high gameplay. And that's just the reality of it. You know, if you're playing against somebody uh, who's of an equal skill, then chances are if you just run around, you know, like an idiot, you know, trying to ego challenge everybody, then you're most likely going to die because you're not playing against dummies here you're playing against smart players so uh one thing i do want to point out about this play that just happened right here is i'm sticking to the outskirts of the map you know playing smart playing smart I i've always been a smart type of player you know i've always flanked literally 10 years in a row that's always that's all i've ever known that's why playing in these lobbies are no problem to me you know of course it depends on what kind of map it is like for example if it's on a nuketown map obviously it's going to be frustrating because it's just literal you know head-to-head -head gunfight there's really no uh course of action for plans and flanking and all that kind of strategy stuff you know but i, I like maps like cartel because it allows for flanking and just trying to out surprise out outsmart the enemies so the the one thing that i do want you to take note of here that you can apply to your own game is the fact that i'm sticking to the outskirts of the map you know look at the mini map i'm literally the only uh, teammate here on my team that is on this side of the map now this allows me to get a lot of flanks and as you can see most of the people that i shoot you know they don't even know that i was there and it's because i'm flanking i'm trying to attack the enemy by surprise and it's working out really well so unfortunately i wasn't able to get the guy in the tower so i decided to retreat because i know damn well that he's going to be coming for me uh, you know any smart player knows there you go there he is he went after me you know that's what people tend to do you know sometimes when you shoot somebody and you don't get the kill they definitely want to go ahead and kill you because the the natural way that people play are very aggressive you know i consider myself a very small percentage of players who don't play too aggressive and i play rather passive aggressive most of the time and that allows me to be in a position to win a lot more gunfights so uh so what i always try to do is assess the minimap i try to stick to the outskirts as much as possible 
I play slow and steady. I don't rush around like an idiot. I do hear this guy's footsteps in game. He comes right up to me. You know, I was trying to assess which way he was going to go. So um, let me just rewind this here before that segment. All right. So as we approach here, I pre-aim. Pre-aim before you get into any area, right? That's what I'm doing. And as we proceed, as we see that the area is clear, this is what I noticed. This is my thought process. I noticed that my teammate died right here. That's why I'm being extra cautious as much as possible because I know that there's going to be an enemy that's going to pop up sooner or later. There he is right there. He's right there. So instead of going for the chase, because that's what he wants me to do, he wants me to chase him. So I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. He could either... Th this is a 50-50 situation if you think about it. He could go this way and push me or he can go this way around and try to flank me. So watch what I do here. I pre-aim this way right okay i'm waiting now look how i keep my crosshairs like literally dead center of this rock now the reason why i do this is because this gives me a again 50 50 chance of winning a gunfight whichever side he pops up because he could either pop up on the left side he could pop up on the right side if my ads was right here on the left side and he pops up on the right side then i have a higher chance of losing that gunfight because i still have to make that adjustment to my aim to be able to you know lock in on him and get ready for that gunfight you know I'm, it's just gonna be too late at that point long story short so let's just play it right here and i hear his footsteps he's actually coming around to the other side so you know it was a good thing that i pushed up a little bit and got a little cover behind that tree trunk now watch what happens right here i stim shot right away and this guy just slides around the corner you know there's a high chance that you know maybe there's some call outs being made here and you know or or the simple fact that that enemy was just aware of what happened of his teammate dying so unfortunately uh, you know i made the crucial mistake of not using my sigma and as you can see i'm really just trying to take down this uav with my gun and this is bad because i'm losing a lot of ammo but i have no choice because my teammates you know they're not gonna be smart enough to like want to take down the the uavs so it's up to me to to do it to be the team player and for my own sake of surviving in this map all right so check out what i did right here absolutely finesse this guy i see that i have my body armor ready i put that on right away press triangle to cancel somebody pops up i take cover pull out my shoddy and i was able to take out that guy so maybe that was the reasoning why at the time i decided to use my shotgun i mean who knows but i'm looking at the mini map i'm pre-aiming on the left side because i see that there's uh, red enemy dots teammate just got taken out here and you know i just i just got overwhelmed you know i got double teamed they're calling in all these uavs and i was about to try and take it out and then i and then i remembered i don't have my sigma so the best thing that i can do in this situation is to just try to keep moving around try to keep moving around because i've got that ghost perk that's why i was making sure before i started the match that i have the right perks on so as long as i have the ghost perk they shouldn't be able to see me and as long as i keep moving around i should be as hidden as possible so again, I'm still trying to stick to the outskirts of the map. You will never ever see me go out to, you know, the, the field where the grass is so tall, you can't see anybody. Uh, of course, under certain circumstances, maybe I might go there a few times. And I see somebody on my, my mini map right here. Now, uh, one thing also that you do want to note is don't get too excited when you see an enemy pop up on your mini map. So I look at my mini map. I see there's an enemy shooting right at me. You see the bullet tracers, obviously. So instead of pushing the guy, I just ADS, you know, I'm... I, I'm pretty much I have no choice here if I were to push up he would definitely be waiting for me he's gonna kill me so I'm just patient I just wait for him to pop up there he is right there so he he pushed right he pushed right and I was able to take him out but I don't think that's it because the enemies should be spawning in there you go there's another guy so where I come from with this logic of where I need to go at all times is I look at the minimap I know I talk about it a lot but it is a very powerful tool and as you can see here there are no teammates, no blue triangles on this portion of the map. So if you know anything about spawn logic, wherever your teammates are, uh, the enemies are going to be spawning in from the opposite side of the map. So that's why whenever you go into these areas, always be ready for the next gunfight because they could be spawning in from the game. And as you can see, there are actually people dying here on the kill feed. All right. So I was able to take out that guy. There's another guy pushing me. So I decided to throw my Semtex to, you know, ward him off a little bit while I give myself a chance to back up. And, and flee from the situation get into a better position and i'm head glitching this car for good reason obviously i don't want to die uh, because he knows exactly where i'm at i put down my field mic here just for good measure and it seems that the spawns have actually flipped you know just based on the information the minimap is giving me so 
I'm a little mad at myself for that one. I wasted my my uh, my, my my field mic. So again, another red dot popping up. He's gonna come up through this window, and I'm pre-aiming. My, I'm I'm getting ready. I don't want to push that. I don't want to push that. I'm factoring in. Let's back it up here. I'm factoring in the amount of enemies there are versus uh, you know me, like how many people I'm able to take on. So if we just watch this play out, I noticed my teammate died here. Blue skull indicates that. Now there's three enemies right here. If I want to push out and be aggressive, I'm most likely going to die and obviously who likes dying in the game so i'm just gonna pre-aim on this side so my reasoning for this is because my teammate has this line of sight covered uh at the moment in time there was no action happening so i decided to cover more ground that's why i went on this side of the map and just pre-aim just so that we don't get flanked we don't get blindsided so now we're being pushed they're actually pushing so i i uh, retreated real quick i turned around killed the guy who killed my teammate I turn around again because I knew that there were multiple enemies, remember, from earlier. So it's all about awareness. You got to be aware of your surroundings, so the minimap, how many enemies there are. You know, make calculated decisions. And this guy, unfortunately, he just got a really good throwing knife kill on me. And, uh, you know, it's it's a little rage inducing when those things happen, but it does happen. But anyways, I have my war machine here and I'm just going to bust it out real quick because I want to gain a sizable lead on these guys because, you know, these guys can pop off at any moment. So uh, this is a special circumstance where I'm just literally running around because I'm run I'm carrying the war machine. Anybody who has ever tried the war machine knows you're basically unstoppable. It's all about timing. You know, make sure before you you go into open areas of the map that you're not caught sprinting because when you caught sprinting, there is a delay between the time that you pull the trigger for your war machine uh, and the time it actually comes out. So uh, this is where they spawn in from. So this is a pretty uh, pretty cautious spot that you have to be at. And I was able to get a flank there and an extra kill. So when you're running around with the war machine, don't get too comfortable with it. Obviously, you still want to play smart whenever you enter those areas. Like I was saying, enemy died right here. I mean, teammate died. Let's back this up just 10 seconds. So as, I, as soon as I approach this area, I noticed that my teammate died right here. And that's why I'm getting ready for this guy. Boom, right there. Got the kill. And another one. And the thing that I really love about the War Machine is it makes it at least viable to stand against, like, good players. You know, it gives us a chance. So look at this guy. We're going to play Ring Around the Rosary, Rosary here. He almost got me with his uh, little stun grenade. Pretty smart player in my opinion. But obviously I had the advantage because I had the War Machine. So I just want to explain a few things first. So after I killed this guy, right, I was going to head into this direction because... I felt like this is maybe where the enemies are spawning in from because it's not if it's not from the south side it's definitely going to be the north side but the minimap is telling me which way i need to go so watch see i have too many teammates here now there's nothing going on that means that there's no enemies so that's why i immediately turn around and plus the minimap is telling me where i need to go okay keep an eye on that minimap i'm gonna come up here and the reason why i come up here is because again they might be spawning in from this area that's why I want to get those extra kills. I got one more war machine left. Boom. I missed it. I stim shot. Now, now they're definitely pushing up. So here's one enemy over here. And I'm going to get ready for this gunfight. He kills my teammate. I slide around the corner. And sliding around corners gives you a huge advantage. It basically breaks the enemy's uh, camera, so to speak. So now, you know, the enemies are a little successful pushing up. You know, that sentry gun location, I don't agree with that at all because it still allows the enemy to gain enough closure and close the distance between myself and the enemies. So that's why I don't really agree with that sentry gun placement, but, you know, whatever. So here, watch this. He throws that proximity mine or she throws the proximity mine, right? What I do right away to adjust is I went uh, on a squatting position. So that way I don't die. So again, a lot of small details that you have to pay attention to in game in order to survive right there. So I get stunned and uh, let's see, my teammates are still alive. So that's good. And I'm just assessing the minimap. Still looking at the minimap. There's a lot of action going on in the middle of the map. But now the spawns have flipped. That's why I'm going this way. I see somebody in the middle of the map here. I'm checking again. Still sticking to the outskirts of the map. I'm not running towards the middle of the map. I don't have a war machine, you know, so I want to increase my chances of winning, you know, future gunfights. 
So again, stick into the outskirts of the map. How many times? How many times have I said that? You know, get it. I want it to be embedded in your brain. You know, if you really want to increase your your know, quote quote Call of Duty IQ, I don't know what you call it. This is what you have to do. Like especially in these lobbies where you know your opponents seem tougher. You know that's what you have to do to outsmart these guys. So I'm trying to go for the chase here. I'm not sure. I remember if I was able to get this guy, but I think this should be a flank right here. So there's an enemy right there. My shot is absolutely terrible. And a teammate just died around here. I noticed this field mic. I destroy that right away. You know, every time you see stuff like that, just destroy it. Because that gives them an advantage. You know, regardless, even if you have ninja, they're still going to see you on your, your minimap. I think it's a bug. So 100% they're going to be spawning into here. Directly in front of me, the spawns have flipped. I wasn't able to get that guy. And I do see this guy out in the middle of the field. Teammate just died right in front of me. And 100%, that guy probably had ghosts. That's why I didn't see him. And he is running around trying to knife people. So uh, I'm assuming he's trying to play as stealthy as possible. So I get the final kill. You know, I, and that is that. And uh, we finished off with 28 kills, 4 deaths. And uh, yeah, guys, you know, I hope you guys did learn something from this video. I will try to include more videos like this because I feel like... You know, me playing against these tougher opponents is a very good uh, learning moment for you guys as well to apply to your own game. Now, these are really just the nitty gritty details of how I actually play the game. If I really want to do well, you know, it is very taxing on the mind, obviously, because you have to do so much thinking. But, you know, sometimes if you really want to do well, that is the things you want to do. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to drop a comment below. Leave a like on this video and make sure to subscribe if you're brand new for more tips and tricks. Let's go, baby.